Brother Ephemi is keen to get home after the daily service in the nearby monastery. And that involves walking about a dozen steps down into this rock formation. This site served as a refuge for monks even back in medieval times. They say monks have been living here since the 13th century. According to the Encyclopedia Britannica, it's since the 12th century. We don't have any archives, so we just have a rough idea. Now, he's the only one left living here. For the past 18 years, with no water, electricity or heating. But he does have a little church. Ephemi used to work as an electrician and had a wife and children. He won't tell us why he gave everything up to live alone. But even as a child during communism, he was fascinated by religion. I secretly attended church from about 1955 to 1960. And it wasn't really allowed. In the church, there was an area with a barred window. I was in second grade or so, and I remember how I would grab hold of the bars and not let go until the service was over. Nowadays, he spends his time studying texts by candlelight and reciting long prayers. When I pray, it gives me a sort of peace, and sometimes pain, but they aren't directly related. It's both, pain and peace. Mm -hmm. Now and then, villagers come to ask him to pray for their dead. They pay him with a loaf of bread or some money. There's also a growing number of tourists interested in the cave monastery. Today, some curious folks from Japan have come to pay a visit. Ephemi is happy to show the way. When I came here 18 years ago and people just stumbled in, I used to shout at them. I'm calmer these days. I speak to them. The world comes to him. He wants nothing to do with the world anymore. Ephemi traveled a great deal when he was young. Today, the view from his narrow balcony in front of his cave is quite enough. As a hermit, what does he know about the world out there? The war in Ukraine, for example. This war is complicated, but it has spiritual causes too. Brother Ephemi doesn't want to say much more about that. The war is painful for the Orthodox monk. Does he have any counsel for humanity? Be modest in your desires. Do what you ought to do, rather than what you want. And then maybe you will do the right thing. And it will be beneficial. That's his message from solitude. Perhaps you don't have to be too close to the world to give it the right advice.